Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'd like, like to welcome to the stage, Dynamic Koalas. Thank you, Fan, for that uh, funny joke again. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name's Neil. I'm, I'm joined, joined by, by Hitton, Drew, James, and Darren, and together we make up Dynamic Koalas. Okay, so hands up if you've ever ventured into the dark depths of your fridge and you want to pick out a food item, but you notice it's out of date. Yeah, I mean... For all people listening on YouTube, there were many hands up in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so here at Dynamic Koalas, we want to solve that issue. So what we've created is a mobile app that allows you to track um, items into a fridge list. So you can either um, scan an item via the camera, or if it has a barcode, you can use the barcode reader, or you can input it manually. Um, the form has form validation, so there's no data errors. Also, when a food item is just about to go out of date, it will send you a notification, so we can stop um, the forgotten food. I'll hand it over to Drew, who will talk about these amazing features. So essentially, this is what happens on your first screen. It opens up a list of all the items you currently have in your fridge. You can filter by sections, you got like fruit, veg, meat. Um, you can, on his page, you can edit like on the slide. So for example, if you have less fried chicken in your fridge, you can reduce it. If you go below one, it prompts to delete. Or if you just use a um, delete button on the right-hand side, it can just delete it from the actual fridge list. On this page as well, you can see all the dates. You can change on the dates on the slide as well. So if it's past its sell-by date, it will turn red. If it's before the sell-by, um, best before, it'll be green. And then if it's on the same day, it'll be amber. So it helps you kind of like visualize what your dates are like. And then you can go to the add item page. In here, you can just add in random items. It'll The phone violation will stop you from not adding in the right information. I'm gonna use dragon fruit. Um, you can only have a certain amount of items. So between 199, if you've got 100 dragon fruit, maybe not this app. <laughs> so then you click add to the fridge and you select your date and you select your category. Um, and then once that's added, boom, it's straight into your fridge. And if you go to your uh, actual fridge, it's right there straight away. So then you've just gone to the shop, you bought some items and all that kind of stuff. So instead, we're going to use a camera feature. So we bought one mushroom. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Take a picture of it. Clarify will decide what item that is and give you some options of what it thinks it is. In this scenario, it's not a potato or chocolate. It's a mushroom. So you select mushroom and then it'll bring you to the add item page where you can add it. And then with our little cheeky little mushroom, let's have a giant bottle of ketchup to have with that. Um, we have an integrated barcode scanner that will pick up the barcode and implement that as well. And then again, add it to the fridge. And that is our app. I'm now gonna pass you on to Darren, who's gonna talk about our spiking and the ways we work together. Okay, uh, thank you, Drew. Our team introduced good work practices and ethics from the get-go. The team's first, decided that Stack and Zoom would be the best solution for communication. Next, we put agile practices in place, a Kanban barb to visualize our project. Then we scheduled daily stand-ups at 9 a.m. each morning, which were quick and direct to the point. We also finished the day with stand-downs, keeping our team members up to date on progress. Our dev setup included Git version control to keep track of our source code. Also, we used Husky to help improve the quality of commits through error checking. We also had great fun learning about Git branches and merging. As a team, we decided on coding standards and also use of ESLint in our workflow. We also used pair programming for most of the project. I would say this was benefit for all team members. Can you get the next slide, please? Uh, the spiking phase. At this stage, we took a look at options for the back end, which included MongoDB, Express, and PSQL. We also researched front end options, APIs, and image recognition technologies. After research, we decided to spike TypeScript, Svelte Native, React Native, Firebase, TensorFlow, and food related APIs. Our findings were that image recognition and TensorFlow were the highest risks to the project and would need to be monitored as they played a big part in our MVP. Uh, can I pass it over to James for more info about the tech stack? 
Thank you, Darren. One of the difficulties with mobile development is creating apps that are cross-platform. This can be solved with React Native and Expo. As our app is going to be mobile only, React Native is perfect as we are able to take what we already know in React and create an app to be used specifically on iOS and Android. To help with us routing and navigating through our app, the package React Navigation is essential. Along with Expo, developing and updating our app is simple on both platforms. Expo also provides us with their own APIs. We found the camera, barcode scanner, for scanner notifications and date picker very practical, and we're able to integrate them with our other technologies. Forms in React can be frustrating with setting up different state for handling changes to the form values, the errors, and the validation as well as with updating the stat state and submitting the form. We are using Formic as this allows for all of that to be taken care of. For our backend, we've decided to use Firebase as it suits small apps with limited querying and a short development phase. It's easy to set up and use, updates in real time, and can be edited directly from the cloud itself. One of the riskiest new technologies for our app is image detection. For that, we are using Clarify which allows us to use a pre-built food identification AI model and integrate it with our camera and forms. Another of the APIs we're using is Open Food Facts, which is a free to use food products database and is used in conjunction with the barcode scanner to identify most food items. And now I'll pass you on to Hitton, who will be going over some of the challenges we have faced. Thank you, James. Um, one of the biggest challenges I faced personally was uh, implementing navigation through notifications. We wanted our app to send you to the fridge page after clicking on a notification, but this was tricky to do with a tab navigator. We resolved this by using deep linking and correctly spelling our URL. Um, another issue was clarify. Um, we suspect the API was being throttled due to the number of requests made during testing. This only affected Neil for some reason, and due to time constraints, uh, other members of the group had to do some of the requests and we couldn't investigate the issue further. Um, finding the right camera also proved to be problematic as uh, the React Native camera and the React Native Vision camera were no longer being supported and did not work with our application. So settling on the Expo camera and getting basic camera functionality set up took longer than expected. Um, finally, timestamps. When we were uploading data to Firebase, we were adding timestamps via a date picker. This caused an issue and a little bit of a panic when we were converting, um, when the, everyone's code stopped working because data was not being correctly read and displayed. We resolved this by using Moment.js and converting our timestamps from objects to strings, which allowed us to use conditional rendering for our CSS and Offridge items page. Next slide, please. If we had a little bit more time working on this project, we had a few more features we'd like to add, the main one being a recipes page. This would have been a list of recipes you could create using the current items in your fridge. And we would have done this by using the Spoonacula API. Um, if also we would have liked to use a test TensorFlow custom model instead of Clarify. Um, and some nice to have features would have been a splash page and swipe gestures to make our a mobile app more dynamic and easier to use for people busy in the kitchen. Finally, optical character recognition was a feature we would have wanted, which allows us to extract text from a digital image. We would have liked to have added this to our camera so a user would not have to input the best before date manually and they could instead use their camera to scan the best before date. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thanks for listening. Are there any questions? Give it up. <clears throat> Hello.